and welcome to another bright and shiny morning today at B2B Breakfast to Business. This is your morning girl, Bea Lim, bringing you another exciting episode of our weekly podcast. So guys, you know, it's Q4, like well into the fourth quarter of 2020. We always say that we've really been through a... Uh, a really big roller coaster this year but aside from you know what's been happening all around q4 means one thing which is the last quarter slaughter of the year which is usually the busiest quarter of any business year for you know your shops as well as your brands teams are deep into the final stretch of year-end campaigns while Mancoms and senior leadership teams are already prepping for 2021, the amazing planning sessions that are right around the corner and people are really busy putting those things together. Usually, we look into profit margins, products, services, processes, and people strategies, which definitely seeps into operations, which also have mostly been managed from work from home during this pandemic. So it got me thinking, is remote work or work from home the new normal for the workplace? You know, through the past months, work from home, blended ops, remote working, workplace reimagined, digital workplace. These are just some of the buzzwords really surrounding the hazy future of work. We've heard it everywhere, not just actually this year, but, you know, through through the whole digital transformation journey of companies worldwide. But really, the question that we have here at B2B Breakfast to Business is, post-pandemic, how does the future of work really look like from a productivity, creativity, and operational perspective? Are we ready to adapt to the future of work? Now, these are things that, you know, I'm sure you guys have been thinking about, really mulling over, and I'm sure a lot of mancoms are also really putting this into perspective as they go into planning. So today, what I wanted to do was to talk about it because I feel we haven't talked about it enough. And again, like, you know, it's not just about work from home, but it's also about blended, blended ops, remote working, especially, um, you know, as we shift to this now normal or future reimagined post-pandemic. So today, I invited my good friend over to have this discussion about the future of work. Um, this guy um, is someone that I really do bump into so many conferences and, and the like. Sometimes we're just su super surprised if we see each other in other parts of the Philippines speaking at you know the same gig or, or whatnot. But what I truly enjoy actually are the fantastic conversations that we have, not only about present day stuff, but also you know what are the things that are going to happen in the future. So I thought that he would be the best person to talk about this. And today, joining me in B2B Breakfast, to business is a full-time ad man, a part-time teacher, and a digital marketing specialist and a content creator who is on a never-ending journey to be always better than who he was yesterday. We have here my good friend, Mr. Jason Cruz. Hey, Jason. Hey, Bea. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Thank you for being here. I know you are like such a wanted person all around. You're super busy. So I really appreciate you being here today. It's cool. As long as it's not wanted by the cops, I'm like, that's <laughs> that's all right with me. Absolutely. Don't worry. Everything's safe here at B2B Breakfast to Business. Or is it? I'm not sure. Du -du -du <laughs> because we've got a lot of great questions for you, Jason. But... You know, you know that we're going to talk about the future of work, right? Because, you know, that's something that I really want to pick your brains on. But before we even go into that, how are you? Like, how has this big roller coaster of 2020 been for you? 2020 is like a super mixed bag for me in, in, uh, in every sense of the word. I transferred jobs in January. I got to... Uh, yeah, so let's start from the start of the year. It was super exciting, new job. I'm joining an analytics company, so completely out of my comfort zone. Then, boom, COVID-19 happens, and I have not actually seen an office because, uh, so this is the funny part. I joined this new company. They're in the middle of a renovation, so we were working at the co-working space, and then COVID happened, and suddenly we started working from home. So a perfect topic because I have not seen my new company's office, and I have been in the company almost a year now uh so it's been a bit of a downer um uh, yeah the months after the quarantine started was super depressing but hey you know what 2020 has a silver lining for me i'm getting married in two weeks oh, 
Yeah, can you guys like put applause sounds on the podcast? I want to hear some applause sounds. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting married in two weeks, so that's definitely a massive highlight. But aside from that, everything's been crazy. I guess getting married is like a crazy thing too, right? But it's like yeah. crazy good. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's it's a, it's a mixed bag of feelings for me. No, absolutely. Like it's it's super exciting for you because I know like you and I were like connecting, you know, just like about I think a month into the pandemic, and I know there were so many different changes already happening around, and and I know that you know um, you've also been talking already about the future of work for some time now in your own YouTube channel and the like. But what I also really um, wanted to share with everybody here is that what I do love is that you give everybody your insights on both the present day, like what's happening now, but at the same time, what are the things that we can do to equip ourselves for a better future in the now normal, so to speak. And I think that that's really coming from the place of the excitement and the learnings that you've experienced just this past year. So, Jason, I'm super excited that we're going to be going into this um, uh, this conversation because I really do feel do that a lot of people need to talk about this, right? Um, it is hush hush conversation among friends or among team members, but and and you know it's a topic in big conferences, but of course it's like a lot of best practices, trends, but really like what about feelings and and the reality, the right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I really want to just like get straight into it. Um, so we have again, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jason Cruz, and we're going to be talking about the evolution of the workplace in two parts, right? The first one is we're going to talk about how it's fast evolving with all of the buzzwords, getting Jason's thoughts on it. And then later on, I really do want to ask him also on what he feels like, um, you know, what he feels we should do to equip the the workers of the future so to speak right as we dabble into this new normal post-pandemic and how creative and productive we want to be so let's get right into it when the lockdown was announced in the earlier part of the year a lot of businesses were stunned you know yeah. we were like stunned and we felt we were also crippled you know in terms of operations because you know at one point we were just thinking it was like something temporary something that could yeah, be like yeah, fixed exactly. diba? In like two months, stop. We're good. <laughs> but then, ta -da. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, so when I was when I was like doing my wedding planning during that time, I was telling my fiance, who's your neighbor, by the way, <laughs> like I across know. her house now. Congratulations, <laughs> you two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I was telling her, hey, you know, let's not uh, pfft, let's not panic. Uh, it's gonna be done in two months. We'll keep all the reservations. We'll do all of these things. And yeah, two weeks away from now, <laughs> it's still the same. Yeah, no, I was just about to say, the right? from wedding plans to business plans to office yeah. plans, you know, we've really been stunned. And 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 Absolutely. I have to say, we've we've also been really hopeful. But let's just face it, operations has been hit, right? Um, yeah, uh, for and, sure. And actually, you know what? Yeah, go ahead. On, the, on that, um, I I just want to talk a little bit about like what happened to our company, for example. So we, again, we had the renovation. Uh, we were supposed to move into our new office in March. And then, obviously, that's not happened. I'm in I'm in my home office now, a makeshift home office. Uh, on operations, we had so many meetings in the first couple of months because our 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 company is based in Southeast Asia. We're in we're in 13 markets, and yeah, there was a bit of a panicky discussion on number one, people's well being. Right? What? How are employees gonna be like when no one's seeing each other? I think that was I think. That was the biggest effect on everybody, especially for the new employees and uh, like you, like me, <laughs> like me. So that was really tough. Uh, the second was a lot of companies because that was the start of the year. All the rents, all the office space rent was paid, right? Or it's like in credit. So of course the finance people were like, "Oh my god, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen?" And uh, good thing there were some apps to alleviate that. But I think the third one was re really painful, where you 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 suddenly started seeing. This is very sad and very unfortunate to say, but you actually could see there were some roles in the company that did not have a place yeah. in a work from home setting. And the painful part was that those are roles that we took for granted because we always felt like they were essential, like our guards. You know, and these are people who you feel so horrible for because you love them. And then suddenly, why would you now need a security guard? Why would you now need 
um, right? The, the service people inside the office. So we, yeah, we saw the vulnerability happen in our own company. And if we were going through that and we're a, we're a digital company, right? So we could actually like business as usual, but what about the thousands of other businesses out there? And I think we saw in the last couple of months, Philippines, 8 million jobless. I know. Gah. No, absolutely. You raised an important point, Jason, because a lot of people also think that, you know, with this pandemic, there were, and, and you know this for sure, there were so many studies that said there were some industries that were really able to pivot, but unfortunately, there were also some industries and companies that were, that unfortunately were really hit bad because yeah, maybe their really workplace bad. was more traditional. But you raised a more important point. It's not just about industries and companies that were in a traditional workplace, right? But it was actually also that there are roles that yeah. that we thought we needed all the time and, and they have been very hardworking, but unfortunately, they were hit too. And we've yep. had to like really transition very fast to getting your business to a BAU, Business Sustainability Standpoint. Oh my God, that acronym is like acronym <laughs> of the year. I mean, Seriously, BAU and BCP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh God, this oh. <gasps> <laughs> so so on that note, Jason, like you've already told us about what happened with you in terms of the transition. But but what I want to check in, was it easy for you the transition from from being at even a co-working space, like being there every day, um, especially yeah. with you being in the industry before you even, you know, changed jobs to to transitioning to a work from home setup? Like you personally, how was it? Oh man, it was rough for me, like really rough. I had I had um just I you know not trying to be overly vulnerable in your podcast, but I had some I had some mental health concerns uh, middle of this year. So that was something that our company addressed. Uh, they got us this spiritual advisor person, and then we also had some health and wellness activities because there were so many people in our company who live by themselves, like me. And you know, suddenly your your home is the place you. It became a jail, you know. It felt like yeah. a jail as well. And you know this because, I mean, you have listeners from outside of the Philippines. They might not be able to relate. But we had this complete quarantine thing, right, the first couple of months. That was so rough uh, mentally for me. Uh, and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pretty bubbly person. You know? I, like, I like people. I like being with people. And, and that transition was nuts. Plus, I was, going, I was going to a new company where, you know, you're trying to build rapport with people yes. that you're going to be working with. Suddenly, the rugs pulled under you, and then you're trying to build relationships uh, through a Zoom call, and it's just our photo IDs uh, smiling at you, completely frozen. And because uh, we're a developing country, we don't exactly have the fastest internet in the world. So yeah, even if we had video on calls, it was just weird because it's choppy. Uh, that was really rough. The the toughest part, I think, was the separation of what time does my work start and what time does my work end? I mean, it's Absolutely. easy to say you can close your laptop and be done with it, but your mind's not left work. You know what I mean? Because you wake up, I, I live in a 60 square uh, meter condo, right? So it's not the biggest place in the world. So when I wake up here in my bedroom and I, I, I try to give myself a rule where I do not bring anything like my laptop or anything work-related inside the bedroom. But the thing is, Three steps later, I'm at my living area and I see my work laptop waiting there. And you know, I just have this soundtrack behind me going, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. it's work day. So it feels like that every single freaking day. And and if I want to like go for a quote unquote walk because I want to like get my mind off work, there's nowhere to go. It's it's going to the kitchen, which is another 12 steps away at best. Yeah. Uh, fixing myself a drink and then I see my laptop again and rem I'm reminded of work. So yeah, the, the whole separation thing was completely gone and I never thought that it was so important to have a place called the office where you yeah. leave like work and office stuff behind and then you go to your home, your, your supposed sanctuary. Uh, so yeah, that was really rough. That, that transition period, I think from mid-Feb to about June, I, that was the worst for me. That was really, really bad. Uh, we were not, you know, this. We weren't allowed to go out, so uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see anyone aside from uh, our admin, our condo admin, <laughs> for like a few months. 
that was that was terrible and then it's so hard to build relationships with clients with colleagues as well no but absolutely we have to adjust we have yeah to adjust. so actually jason what was the turning point for you because you did say that there was like that time that it was like wow man this transition was just absolutely horrendous and it yeah. was it was really tough for everybody also because we were experiencing a global pandemic or we still are so the the other side of your mind is like hello world um yeah, hello you know, world. Thr- uh, I mean threat, threat to life movie, right? exactly like a zombie apocalypse like threat to yeah. life threat to livelihood so yeah so what was the turning point for you like um you said until mid-june it was really tough but what turned it around i had a couple of things that uh, i had to do for myself uh, so when we had our mental health um, consultant person. I actually don't know what, what how to describe him because he's like a spiritual person, but mm. he's uh, he's not like a religious based spiritual person. So I thought he was really and he was really cool. Like you could feel like he was sincere. Um, so it was a mix of a bit of yoga and stretching, some meditation, and then he opens up into this um, religion agnostic prayer. Which, by the way, I super love religion agnostic prayers. It's like praying to the universe. And I love world, it. Yeah, it feels super calm. Yeah. So anyway, so there were some sessions there that really helped me. Uh, one of the things that he said was, um, you know, there's, there's, there's this moment in time where you kind of have to emotionally and psychologically slap yourself in the face and tell yourself, look, here we are. Let's get this done. I mean, it, I, know, I know it's easier said than done. It is. I'm telling you, it's easier said than done. But I think it starts with that first step where you have to kind of like take a deep breath Hey Jason, um, this is it. I mean, this is this is the. I like the term, by the way. Now normal, you know. So take a deep breath, and this is it. Now that this is it, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. And I think I think when he started giving us questions like that, it made me realize, like, yeah, I could curl up on on my couch, which I've been doing for two to three months, just curl curl up and be sad and be miserable, or figure out how to make things work. Uh, so that was step one. The other, the other thing that really helped was I started a new hobby. Uh, I wanted to learn a new skill, something that I could learn from home. And that's actually how my YouTube channel got started uh, in May. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't have a ton of subscribers, right? But what I appreciate was, um, and this, you're going to know about this for the first time. I talk about work-life inspiration. And it's a lot about what, how I would motivate myself. And yeah. I've actually had a few schools and some companies reach out to me from my tiny little YouTube channel asking me to give talks on work-life inspiration to their companies. I'm like, I'm not qualified for it, but I guess it's, I guess people you want to hear someone who went through it and kind of got out pretty okay. So that's how I started the, the whole channel thing. I wanted to learn a new skill and it was video editing because uh, you have to know how to do video editing when you do a YouTube channel. So those two things helped me um, find my center a little bit. Uh, some of my friends went shopping. I think this was the pandemic shopping spree. You're, yeah, you know, I, I kind of feel like you're agreeing <laughs> here because I, I, I went to a, I went through a slight pandemic shopping spree. And I bought office furniture and um, work from home essentials. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's nonsense. It was it was a coping mechanism. <laughs> But ladies and gentlemen, with full disclosure, I would just like to say that um, not only is Jason saying that I'm agreeing, it's really true because we were swapping messages on chairs and tables and and the like as our own um, essential buying um, COVID-19 um, pandemic shopping. But really, it was a coping mechanism. I totally feel you. It was a coping you. mechanism. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm parking, parking my butt on this chair right now. <laughs> I, I love my, my work chair. I wouldn't trade it for the couch. I'm looking at the couch now and I'm like, eh, I'll see you later. Netflix. But the work work chair is legit. The work chair <laughs> is the comfy chair. I know, I know. And and I think Jason, it was also just to just to add to what you also said earlier. I think that you know also what was hard was we don't we didn't have an outlet, right? So that's why Ooh, yeah. I like I liked what you said about being able to learn a new skill because before you know, when things got rough or when we didn't know what was going on, you know, we could actually say, hey, you know what, I'm going to take a couple of days off work and then I'll go to, um, I'm going to go and um, go to the beach or for you mountains because I know you're a, yeah. you're a mountain oh guy. Oh my God, this is the first time I think in my life since I was, so I started hiking at 11 
Um, I would try to do like a quick outdoorsy thing once a year. And 2020 just completely broke my streak. So if this was a game, it would have been like level failed. Yeah, uh, no mountains at all this year. No nature. I mean, I have a five pots of plants in my balcony. That's as much <laughs> nature as I've been getting. I know. So I think that, you know, it's, it's really about, um, uh, you know, seeing how people transitioned from like uh, a, the usual bump and grind to something that was really new. And then like what you said, having to actually say, you know what, this is the now normal. We're, we're either going to sink or swim and I'm going to choose to swim. Right. So I'm super glad that that happened for you. But we also have to admit that there are still a couple of folks out there that are having a hard time, right, with this with this setup. Yeah, it's super. And I don't mean for this this podcast to be depressing, but a couple of weeks ago, I found out that a batchmate of mine actually took his own life. Oh, um, I'm so and sorry. I can't, and and yeah, it's uh, it's terrible. And I think, I think it's very it's it's unreported. Uh, a lot of people have been quite um, challenged to, uh, mentally in terms of coping this with this with this thing, and. Whoever's listening and, and you know, you're feeling the exact same thing, do what I did. You got to reach out to somebody. You'd be very surprised to find out how many friends you have out there. Yeah, don't, 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 coop, don't coop up and uh, don't, don't keep things to yourself. And this is, I think we're a lot more patient with each other uh, during the pandemic. So, yeah, if you're listening and you're going through a rough patch, go call someone. There's someone out there. Trust me. Absolutely. Thank you so much for bringing that up, Jason, because not everybody gets to talk about it. So I'm so happy that you actually brought it up. Um, it's very important for us to be able to help one another out. So like what Jason said, guys, if you guys are you know, going through a rough patch or it's really getting unbearable, please reach out to someone. Um, it's very important that you feel that you are not alone because you really are not alone. We're, yeah, we're, yeah. we're, we're in this together. We, we really are going through such a huge world change. So know that you are not alone. Yeah, that everyone is feeling this, you know. So it's, it's yeah, it's nothing, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Absolutely. So actually, Jason, you brought up that good, that good point. And, and I do want to talk about the pros and cons, right, of this kind of setup. Because you've, you've, you've um, experienced the rough patch, but then you've also experienced the I'm going to make this work patch, right, um, and journey. So to you, based on your experience, what were the pros and cons of exactly that, the work from home, the remote work setup? Um, and, and what were the adjustments that you had to make to make it happen? Sure. Uh, so we, we, we covered a lot of the cons already, and a lot of it has to do with the transition. Uh, I, think, I think change is always going to be tough, right? So the thing was, this particular change was imposed on us. You know, we were, we were picked up by the universe, by our tailbones, and like, chucked into this mud pit called work from home. And you make it work. So <laughs> it's tough. You, know, you get stuck and you're all muddy and bloody after. But you know what? Now that we've had seven or so months, oh God, seven months <laughs> to, to, to think about it and to experience it uh, for, for us who are currently working from home, I, I would say there are benefits. I don't know yet if the benefits outweigh the, the, the cons, but there are. For example, commute time is gone. Absolutely. Uh, Bay, you live in the south. I live in the middle. It doesn't freaking matter in Manila where you live. The moment the you know, the moment you're on the road at seven or eight in the morning, you're done. I mean, the, <laughs> you, you, you you're done. You're gonna be in the you're gonna be in traffic. You know something I also I noticed. Just a quick segue. We don't even use the term heavy traffic in the Philippines. We just use the word traffic. Traffic. <laughs> because when I when you say traffic, it's heavy. My my dad my dad pointed that out. Uh, he's he's from uh, my parents are in the states, right? So my dad's like, you know, every time you say traffic, what do you mean? Like traffic is like one person on the road, right? I said. Oh no! In the Philippines, traffic is like traffic. twenty million people in front of you. Uh, so I think that's one thing that I would never miss. Yeah. Uh, I started driving two years ago, and I was so excited in like the first few months. And then I moved jobs, and so I no longer live across my village. I uh, sorry, I no longer work uh, across my village. So I had to go through BGC traffic and C five traffic because now I work in Makati, right? Uh, so. Yeah, and Makati has its own little rules, yeah. has its own. Uh, so that was rough. Uh, oh, oh, and and I got I got exposed to the whole coding, the race against coding. Uh, yeah, it's like on every Tuesday, so I know everybody knows my plate number. Uh, every Tuesday, I have to 
I have to rush like crazy because I have to make it to my parking lot <laughs> before seven in the morning, right? Uh, I experienced that. And I gotta say, I don't miss it at all. Yeah. Uh, I gassed up last weekend and I was telling uh, my fiance, hey, this is the third time this year I gassed up. Same here. And it was like from like, a, for example, a 2,500 tank, you're like down to 900. And I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gas is cheap, right? But uh, I don't know if that would like offset that the world is in a terrible state. Yeah, but I, 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 gotta, yeah I guess. Yeah. I gotta say, I gotta say, gassing up three times in one year and the year's almost done and I have like 80% of my tank still full. I think, I think I'm good because I only drive down uh, when, when the quarantine was a bit more loose. I would go to South Bay where you are because, you know, she lives there. And that's like once a week. That was my entire trip for the whole <laughs> month, right? And it's 11 kilometers going, 11 kilometers back. That's it. Yeah, so I think that's a big positive. Another thing that I noticed, um, and this might not be applicable to everyone, but I started eating healthier, which is yes. weird, right? No, absolutely. Yeah. Me too. I lost, I lost, I lost nine pounds over the quarantine. I know people have like, this quarantine weight gain. But I, I lost weight. It was so weird. And then I realized what happened. Uh, when I'm at work, you know, you're, you're with your colleagues. You know how it goes in the Philippines, right? It's 5.30 p.m. You look Happy at each hour. other. Happy yeah, hour. Yeah, there's some eye contact with the, with the fellas. And you go, one round, one round. Yeah, and in the Philippines, one round means like until somebody asks you to go home. <laughs> then you go home. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I lost I lost weight because I, I stopped the whole social eating and the social drinking thing. Um, but yeah, the Zoom Inuman is coming back, so I'm not too yeah. sure. Yes, that that's fun because now when there's like drinking sessions, everyone's super game to get drunk. You know what I mean? Because you're at home. Yeah, yeah. So if like I, I actually joined a birthday party, uh, I think this was around July, July, August. And everyone was like guzzling. Like everyone's game to do shots. And then there was a person on the call, like he literally passed out on his couch, and he was no! everyone could everyone could see that he was gone, right? And but they're like, all right, that's safe. I guess that's safe. Yeah, We're so that cool. Was, We're yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh, another benefit I think. Another pro that I saw was that uh, people tend to be more. People tend to be nicer to each other, especially mm. from a work setting. I think mm. everyone knows, um, like, if you have kids at home. This is something that I notice with my colleagues with kids. And then there's somebody, there. you hear a kid cry. You'd notice that before they could even say, oh, sorry about that noise, someone would already go, oh, hey, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Hey, how old's your kid? Yeah. And then people started becoming more concerned with each other. I thought that was really cool. Uh, yeah. It's not something that, you know, comes out in the conferences, you know, the benefits of work from home. But I actually think, the fact that we're a bit more, what's how do you pronounce the word? Conscientious? Uh, yes, conscientious. Yeah. Conscientious. Yeah, I, I murdered it. I so I'm so sorry, uh, podcast listeners. Uh, don't 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 unsubscribe. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, I think people are a lot more nicer to, to each other because everybody knows like we're going through this crappy yeah. thing. Yeah. I had a colleague. Uh, she had to go to the farm. She had to move to her farm uh, oh, wow. because. Yeah, because it made no sense to rent nearer to the office because there's no office and you're yeah. paying rent for nothing. Yeah, it's super hilarious at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. meetings you'd hear like chickens or roosters I love it. in the background. But we're actually really jealous of it because we, we always tell her, you co- you totally woke up in the freshest air possible. I know. And and nature. Nature too, right? Yeah, it's, um, it's totally fine. Yeah, I think the word also, Jason, that I just wanted to add to that one is empathy. I think a lot more people yeah, have the word, empathy, empathy now. Yeah, like there's just, like, you know, you see, you've seen it always around, like, you know, choose to be kind and, and all of that jazz. But but really what I also super love is how people have been more, um, have been really um, bringing in that empathy to the workplace also. So on that note, I mean, I know we had a lot of like pros and whatnot. Um Jason, what do you think? Do you think that this whole work from home is here to stay as the future of work? Like, will this actually mark the end of physical offices, you think, at least for a while? Oh, man. So this is uh, from this point, henceforth, going forward. Uh, these are personal opinions. So uh, <laughs> this does not reflect my thoughts of my clients, etc., etc. legal coverage. I think it's here to stay. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a question. I don't think it's a choice. But yeah. I do think some industries 
still need to have a physical office. Uh, just the nature of the work. Yeah. But you know what? This whole last seven thing has shown us a lot of businesses don't need offices. You know, I think. Yeah. I mean, I work for an ad agency, and it's awesome if we have uh, an office, but it's you know it's manageable. We we have new clients. It's so weird. Um, I actually presented, and I was talking to my boss about, you know, I just realized something. We're 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 pitching and we're selling ideas to new clients, and they've never met us, and they trust us with millions of <laughs> their money. Without meeting a person face to face, and we always learned, right? Uh, Philippines, very personal culture. You have to have the yeah. chica vibe with the client. No, you know it works. It it it, it can be remote. Um, but yeah, I think some some industries will will still do things the old fashioned yeah. way. Yeah. My uncle is a dentist. Um, so super funny story. Uh, he he was he's based in one of the COVID capitals in the world, New York. And he said oh my. he had to have there. Were, he had some former patients who were he, he's trying to diagnose their teeth uh, through a call, and it was the weirdest thing he's ever done in his entire life. But so he he realized that you know when you're a dentist, you kind of have to see this. <laughs> <You> kinda... <laughs> I mean, absolutely, right? Yeah, and and you can't exactly tell this person to like pull their own teeth, right? It doesn't work that way. <laughs> so there are some things that will go back the way they are. But you know, I think we discovered there are so many jobs yeah. that you can do from home. So many. Yeah. And of course, what we just need to do is to see how we can make that new setup work, right? And and speaking of this new setup, um, I also want to know, do you think that this new setup is going to be effective and productive? And for us to be effective and productive, what should leaders and companies do to measure productivity? Okay, uh, I came from a company before. My previous company was a very hardcore measure productivity kind of place where I even knew like how much my hours were worth because you had to fill it in in timesheets. There was like maximizing uh, productive output, whatever. And then I'm in this new company, right? Where I don't, I don't mean to like harp uh, all the good stuff, but I can't help it. Uh, I've been, you know, we've, we've been quite well taken care of. Uh, but in, in, in my in my new company, it's, it's a lot of trust. And I think if you want to make work from home work, this huge barrier called trusting your employees, it needs mm. to, you know, it, it needs to be taken down. I mean, the barrier needs to be taken down. And you, 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 you as a leader or you as a company owner, you've got to understand that your people will do the stuff they need to do if they know. Here's the, here's the disclaimer. If they know what, you know, what, what they need to do. That's something that I noticed exactly. uh, in, in some of my friends' companies. There's a, the reason why work from home doesn't work from them is that people don't know what they're supposed to do. I mean, we have job descriptions, but job descriptions are just lines on paper, in my opinion. Uh, they, they have to know what they, they're supposed to do, how they contribute individually to the company. And if they know that, they'll do it. You know, they'll do it. Uh, I think we're at the time when em- the word empowerment, which is heavily abused, by the way, the word empowerment really needs to be practiced by companies. Um, yeah. The old way, I think, of how Filipino businesses do it, right, is that there is this reverence for the boss because the boss tells you what to do. It's very one way. Um, the boss watches your move. You clock in so the company knows what time you got in. You clock out so the company knows what time you, quote unquote, left work. So that's gone. That's gone. And so if you want it to work, if, if you're listening and you're a business owner, if you want this to work, there are two things here at play. Number one, do you trust your people? Because if you trust your people, they feel it. But, and if you yeah, don't absolutely. trust your people, they feel it too. And if my company doesn't trust me, I would actually perform a lot worse. You know what I mean? It's counterintuitive, yeah. right? But if I know you're watching my every move, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I can to like, you know, slack off here and there. Um, yeah, es- escape a minute earlier. But I think if your people know that you're trusting them in good faith, it's repaid. I- I'm, a- I'm a strong believer in the positive side of human nature because yeah. it's what I've been quite lucky to have from my people. Uh, doesn't matter which company I'm in, but, but people that I work with, uh, they, 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 they deliver because you know what's at stake. The second thing is 
I think the way we evaluate productivity needs to change. Yeah. Uh, the way we used to evaluate work output. I, I gave this in a couple of talks a few years back about the social media workforce. Uh, I think the topic was how you could do like remote um, partnerships uh, and how, mm-hmm. how can you trust like a community manager you've never met before or how can you trust a content creator that you've never met before? Well, the thing is, the world has changed, right? But the way we're doing things is a very factory-based kind of thing where you expect people to go in a factory, produce whatever crap they need to produce for eight hours, and then they go home to their families. But the people, I think I think we know better. I think pe- we know, we know yeah. better in the sense that we know people are productive at different times of the day. We know that people yes. are productive with different motivations, different triggers. So if you can understand that, uh, you you are on your way to number one hiring better, number two giving better rewards for people, and number three I think changing the way you you measure productivity. So for example, if you're an output based, every company likes to say they're output based, but they're not. They're hours based. Let's be real. If you're listening, yeah. let's be real. I'm looking at you through your earphones. <laughs> you are you know you you're not output based if you're counting hours. You're hours based. So let's be real, people. If you're output-based and you know that this person takes eight hours to do their their job, then you trust that person to find their eight hours in their 24 in a day to produce it. I mean, deadlines are important, but you got to understand when people are working from home, they have to do a lot of other stuff too. You know, one thing I noticed from a personal standpoint, the one-hour lunch break doesn't work for me. It's it's not enough because I've got to cook I, by the way, I learned how to cook this year. Hey. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, you got to cook, you got to eat, and then you got to wash up. <laughs> no, seriously. Seriously. And it's not just actually about the, the lunch, right? Like during that time also, I have to say, so so for me here at home, I'm on, on laundry duty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you imagine that? Chores, it's right? like... Exactly. So, so especially now with the rainy season, like you know, you're you're gonna have to bring in your laundry at some point, right? Before the rains come in. So that is also one of those things that you factor in. And I loved what you said. There are things that used to work in that setup, but then right now it doesn't. So what do we need to do to stretch out, right? The 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 timings of our folks um, yeah, yeah, as think, they go work from it, home. It boils down to how 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 understanding are you of your of your people. Uh, so. Yeah. The way, for example, like my boss um, handles her people, uh, me included there, is if there's stuff that you need to do throughout the day, you know, make that like your lunch break or make that like your 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 break time. So that it's more flexible. It's not 12 yeah. o'clock you stop and then one you come back again. I don't think I don't think that is viable in a work from home setup because yeah, people have kids, right? So some of them have to like check homeworks, some of them have to bathe a baby. So give their break times during the time that they have a break, not a mandated yeah. one hour slot that our office uh, or factory style setup um, does it. And, um, you know, this whole work from home thing as well, uh, there's no commute time. So people think they can start meetings at seven or eight, but mm. no, some people have need their mornings to, to, to do some house chores. Um, they need to, they need to use it for their families. So yeah, it's, it's, if you want, better output then it comes it demands that we have better understanding as well of how our people are i love what you said earlier also jason like like what you said like we need to be able to give breaks to people when they need it but at the same time we also need to be able to block time for them right like to sort of also mandate actually that you shouldn't have meetings at this time to just give everybody like that energy break so to speak because oh God, yeah. what what we've seen also right is that before Jason, like when, when, like what you said, I we work in the south, you live in the middle, or you work in the middle. But then when we had to, to go to each other's offices for meetings and whatnot, people time. understood. People understood you needed an hour to <laughs> yeah. get to that place. But oh then God, now so people see calendars per hour. So like the time blocking thing is also such an important thing to think. Not just because you're saying, oh, that's just a lunch break. No, it's actually really energy break. Like just give a person so true. time to breathe. Yeah, right? so true. My fiance actually taught me a phrase, uh, Tetris, the Tetris calendar. Because her calendar looks like a freaking Tetris. So she has, she has several people reporting to her. And what they do is like they find an empty slot and then they fill it with a box called extra meetings. 
Uh, yeah, she's yeah. So now I know the term Tetris calendars. Tetris, Tetris calendar. I like that. But actually, I, I there's a there's a train of thought that I don't want to miss out, Jason, because you've already started um, looking into that earlier when you talked about the pros and the cons, right? Do you think that um, the lack of physical presence and face to face interactions can affect our creativity and collaboration in the workplace? What I mean, if the question is, can it affect? Yes, uh, it can affect. But if we if we ask it in a way where can it affect it positively or negatively, I actually think it's a negative effect because we're social creatures. You know, we need. And yeah. if you're talking about the creative industry, both of us are in the creative industry. We feed off the energy of the people around us. Sometimes you have an idea, right? And then you kind of see some random person at the office, and you go, and you. I, I'm sure you miss this. I'm sure you miss this. I'm gonna like reenact it. Oi, pst. my five minutes, ka. Can I yep. ask a question? Free ba? <laughs> yeah, five minutes. Can I ask you a question? Or, put in batuhan ta ideas. And then, like five minutes, you're you know you're just there leaning over someone's office. Maybe you're like picking off their candies from their table. And then some productive, wonderful idea happens. That's what's missing. That's what I miss the yeah. most. The whole random. I think there was this this phenomenon, right? The the water cooler uh, chats is gone. Yes. Yep. And that's yep. and in the creative industry. My God, some of like the best work happens during those random stuff. Or uh, and I, I know uh, listeners at home don't please don't uh, like judge. But sometimes you know you're in the bathroom with the colleagues and you know you're not supposed to be talking while you're doing the deed. But in a creative agency setup, we're weird that way. It so happens. Both of you guys are minding your own business. You've got the whole uh, bro code barrier between you and then suddenly someone asks a question bro uh you know that meeting earlier what do you think and then you start chatting and then like an idea pops up i don't judge me i'm sure some of you guys listening have done this where you're washing hands and so you know you start talking and then 30 minutes you're still in the bathroom because some idea happened you know those things those days are gone and it's so sad because those are those are real raw genuine creative conversations and yeah, it's yeah. gone. Absolutely. Like, you know, earlier you said the water cooler conversation, you know, Jason, um, so, so we've said it already to, to some folks. So we had to, to shift offices, right? To the virtual space. And then we have a satellite office when we were honoring our HQ a couple of weeks ago. Oh yeah. And we asked our folks. Like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Like, so we asked folks like, okay, what are you going to miss? Right. And then, you know, the, my favorite parts were not like, oh, I'm going to miss the conference room. I'm going to miss this. People were actually saying, I'm going to miss that, that small corner in the pantry where we wash dishes together and we get to talk about. Yeah. No, because those random moments where you feed off each other's energy. And you know what I'm going to miss also is, you know, when you're in the conference room or in any meeting area and then you guys are talking about something and then suddenly two eyes, two pairs of eyes meet across the room and then you have like invisible oh, yeah, guns. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Like, you know, Completely. and then the energy is just like bursting out of everyone. So... Yeah, you're right. It's like um, there that is something that we are going to miss because those are raw interactions, right? That that allow us to feed off each other. So so on that note, um, do you think that the setup will give way to the rise of individualism in the workplace? Oh, oh tough question. Um, I don't know it will if it will give rise to individualism. I do think though that as we become more isolated from each other in the workplace, um. People might become more individualistic. The the thing going for us though is that we're not an individualistic culture to begin with. So maybe yeah. not, you know, maybe not. I hope not. Uh, because Me too. Yeah, yeah, you know, in, in 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 an industry like ours, collaboration and teamwork is what you know is, is what fuels the work. And if people start becoming a bit more individual in terms of you know concerns, KPIs, outputs, blah blah. I don't think that's a good thing. I don't think yeah. I don't think that's going to create great work. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And and I think that since I already gave you the tough questions J Jason, I think we should already start talking also about you know, how can we actually make it work for us also? I mean, there are so many things that are still uncertain out there. We still don't know the answers honestly because we also don't know when the vaccine is going to come and and all that jazz, right? But I liked what you said earlier. You're going to have to just have that conversation with yourself. Give yourself that mental, emotional, or you know, even physical slap, saying, "Hey, this is it. What am I going to do?" Right. So, 
So despite having this setup for the past months, um, you know, what are the things actually or what are the tools businesses and workers need, in your opinion, to operationalize this kind of setup in a more in a longer term scenario? Ooh, operationalizing the setup from home. I think uh, checks and balances are super important. I think yeah. um, I think companies need to need to change the way they think when it comes to like benefits. I think that's one one easy place to start. I'll give an example. Uh, so agencies, right? They have these like parking benefits, and like for my company, we had like a lunch benefits. So th- those things are gone. So how do you like change it? So what what happened was it became like office furniture benefits for us. So I thought that was really cool. And I think more companies should do that. So yeah, buy buy stuff that will make you feel more productive, and you let your people decide what that is. Uh, and every time, anytime you mandate anything to people, I think in the twenty first century it just backfires because we're not <laughs> we're not wired that way anymore. You know, we're not in the Absolutely. Henry Fordian era of a factory produces one thing, so everybody has a role. Like you're the pin girl, I'm the wheel guy. And that's our jobs for 45 years. You know, it's it's not it doesn't work that way. So I think don't mandate stuff, um, but give people the flexibility to choose um, like what they mm. want to use things like benefits for. Another thing that operationalizing, um, we use a lot of software. I think well, there's no choice. Right? There's no choice. So everything is pretty much through software. Um, I'm actually amazed. Uh, I had a problem with my laptop a few months ago, and our IT guy was like, okay, just um. I'm gonna try getting gaining access in your laptop and just press yes. And I said, "How do I know it's you?" And he goes, <laughs> "He goes, all right. Uh, ask, uh, uh, like, give me a pin code, like, text me, so that it's only my number that gets it." So I gave him like four digits, and so he inputted it. Yeah, it was so amazing. Like he figured out what was wrong with my. He optimized my laptop remotely. That's such a caveman thing for me to do amazed that right in the 21st century no seriously i i i get amazed with our it guy too like he's able to fix everything remotely yeah, and crazy, i'm like right? how do you do so, that so yeah. we, we have a lot of software um so we everything everything is uh through different kinds of software recently we had this app that was launched uh, regionally it was new it was a way for you to give um it was anonymous feedback and anonymous nice. actually anonymous thumbs up basically pat on the back of people and they'll never know it's from you so it's a way, I guess, to like people wake up suddenly. They have like thirty people saying they did a good job at the presentation yesterday, just to make people. You know, oh, hey, that's so yeah, it's cool. pretty cool. And, you know, there's no incentive for you to brown nose anybody because nobody knows who it was. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, what else? Um, operationalizing. I think be be very conscious as well of. Um, I don't know if this is applicable for a lot of companies, but. If, like like duty hours or or shifts. I don't like to use the word shifts because it has a very negative mm. connotation. But for example, yeah. you've got parents at home, and they need the first three to four hours of the morning to coach their kids in um, online classes. If if uh, there's a way for for you to shift your processes where certain people like the parents, uh, they only quote unquote clock in after lunch and then they end their days a bit later. I think that's I think that's one way to do it. Um, or maybe ask them to, okay, you get two hours every morning cut off from your day, but then on Saturdays you render extra whatever. So it's like flexibility. Yeah, like at let's let's yeah. put into practice the the term flexi time because I think flexi time is, is yeah. just a sugar coated term for when you come late. Uh, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not really flexible. Like flexible means the employee gets to f- make the work hours flexible to their schedules. Yeah, and uh, what else? Yeah, off the top of my head, I think those are the major ones. Yeah, no, that was a lot. And I think that that's really good that we're also giving tips and tricks to um, our listeners, especially those who are owning businesses. Now, we talked about operationalizing the workplace, but I want to also know what your thoughts are, Jason, on the blurring lines, of course, between personal space and workspace, right? And and you've yeah. been through that. So what are the things we need in the home space, you feel that can allow us to sort of like set boundaries. Yeah, also. I so that, to operationalize the home front. So yeah, you know that's a great question because that's precisely what I did with our condo. Um, so we we renovated. We just we're finishing the renovation. Uh, last uh, tomorrow's the last day of the paint touch up. So I'm in this bare room. So apologies for any echoes that you hear. 
uh, we, we realized that, uh, so she's going to be moving in with me in two weeks. So we realized, look, this pandemic's probably not going to end anytime soon. Let's be real. Uh, we're probably going to be working from home as well for mo much longer. If not, it's going to be like a blended thing where you spend more days at home and then a few days at work. So we thought, let's set areas where it's going to be work. Uh, the reason why I think that's important, uh, and I'm, I'm not saying you should do it. I mean, if you if you can afford the space to do it, please do it. The 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 separation of your work area in your in your in your living or personal area home area it's psychologically important. I I, I went through this. Believe me, the effects on this on your on your own personal morale on your own personal productivity is massive. If there is a spot, it doesn't have to be a room. It, it just it can just be a spot. Um, before I have this home office where I am in right now, it was uh, it was a desk at, behind my couch in the living area. The only thing that desk was for was for work. Um, yeah. You know, I would I would not bring my laptop into like my dining table. That's a no no for me because I wanted this one spot where it was just purely work. What it did was it yep. gave me this mental boundary that, okay, when I'm at this desk, it's work. But when I'm off of it, I'm off of it. I think that's super important. Uh, I had a video on how to make your uh, work from home kind of work from you. Uh, some things that make you less productive. Another couple of things that people don't consider in terms of operationalizing your home. Fix your house smells. Trust me, it's, uh, yeah, it's massive. You don't realize it, right? But when you're at yep. home, there are there are you know like when you cook uh i, I personally like I, I i started learning how to cook this year so everything i in my my repertoire is like anything on the frying pan and absolutely yeah and i discovered that like frying stuff with chili garlic is the lord's blessing to the planet earth so <laughs> so it does two things for me right number one it makes me really happy because i love chili garlic the second is that my condo smells like chili garlic for like six Absolutely. hours after so you know what the smell thing does like crazy good stuff so i have like a different smell for the bedroom something like you know kind of like a sleepy ish uh smell so i've got like a lavender lavender, yeah, I got a lavender diffuser there i bought for my cousin this bamboo diffuser i never knew bamboo smells so good by the way because absolutely yeah. well i'm glad you found out i love bamboo, bamboo awesome. smell it's so, so fresh. yeah I have bamboo in the bathroom yeah. and then my living area has like very neutral diffusers i forgot i think it's like white musk such a dude sent to get that white <laughs> musk uh guys don't judge me <laughs> i was just buying it off an instagram store so <laughs> sandalwood well, yeah, yeah. so by having those uh i don't know how it worked for me but having like designated smells Kind of put me like in an in an office mindset in the in the living area where my desk was, and then actually that's a good thing. Uh, I'm gonna because now I have a home office. I'm gonna put that scent here, and then the bedroom has a scent, the bathroom has a scent, and these are really affordable ways to quote unquote operationalize or optimize your 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 home setup. That's the first one. The second one is um, the second one is uh, sound. Um, Mm. There are, the, you know, the office is a lot of ambient sounds that help us be productive. Yeah. You know, that hum of the aircon, people's chatter buzzing in the background. And when I started working from home, I noticed all the annoying crap my neighbors do. In <laughs> fact, I have pending, like, I have like four memos that I complain. I, I was the one who, I was the complainant. There has been four memos on the unit upstairs. If you're listening on this podcast, fourth floor. One year, man. One year I've told you not to drag your furniture at 11 at night. You ignore the memos. Oh my God. 11. Yeah. So I actually know the routine, you know. They start dragging their crap at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then it's quiet. Probably they're yeah. having dinner. And then like at 11 at night, like heavy furniture is okay. dragging. So, you know, those little things will drive you nuts. And I also noticed Absolutely. that one of my clocks was really loud. Uh, mm. I'm telling you, you know, it, it, you know, it might sound like I, this is the rantings of a madman, but believe me, if you can identify like smell issues and sound issues, like think about it, think about it. And you're sitting there with your headphones on, but after this podcast, think about it. There are these little noises and these little smells in your house that distract you, and anything that distracts you makes you unproductive. You know, that's that's the simple math in my head. Actually, right? 
that's super true that's super yeah, yeah. true and also and also it it um it messes with your space yeah it does it does it does it, does. it breaks your flow and flow is so important when you're working for fun. i love that yes flow is so flow is super important, important. so yeah fix your flow. smells fix your sounds you know i noticed the light thing um light is also really cheap to fix I was, uh, you know, a bachelor living prior to uh, the fiancé getting involved with the home renovation. You, you, you know, you, if you're a dude in this call, you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're good with the light bulb. That's it. You know, you're, you're good with it. <laughs> that's, uh, that's life. But then, you know, she, she started introducing me to this, like, Philips Hue dimmable. And then, you know, I could set the brightness thing. So, <laughs> oh, so here's what I did, right? Uh, she installed Philips Hue color in, the, in my work area. And, and I set it to this setting. Um, uh, Philips Hue has a setting called Concentrate. And I swear to God, when I click that setting, the light goes whitish blue. And I swear, like, I feel like I am ready for Zone. the office today, people. I am ready <laughs> to work. Let us make my... So, but then, then I go to the room and then the, the, the Philips Hue lights that she set up in the, the home office. Now it's like, I'm surrounded by like warm light because it's nighttime and I'm looking yeah. forward to like cooking a burger and um, watching some Netflix. But yeah, that, that, that's, that, that light separation of the, the yeah. work light versus like the home light plus your work smell versus the home smell and then your work sound versus the home sounds. Man, it does a lot. I mean, Make a guys difference. who are listening, Super. don't knock me off until you try it. Don't knock me off until you try it. You got to try it. No, absolutely. And and Jason, don't worry. Like I am super with you on this one. I cannot count how many diffusers and candles we have around just to fix that smell. Just to just to give you that zone, right? Um, that 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 you you are at the workplace. Yeah. But I just wanted to add one thing that I really do believe helps you operationalize your home space for work, and it's really still having that quote and unquote dress code. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not asking you guys to wear a suit, but you know it is different if you're like you know you have loungewear. We're in. Okay, I am That's finally so off yeah. work. I can be in loungewear. But then, you know, if you want to wear your khaki shorts and your button down, you know, even if it's just a round neck t-shirt, but that's your work outfit, have, have your work, home outfit. Because it does make a difference. It changes your... Yeah, the mindset. Your, I think the, your, your the mindset, mindset changes, yeah. Yeah. So, so, like, actually, that's one of the things that I've done. Like, you know, I'm an early riser. You know this. I'm like go 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 i'm already in like my workspace but then you know towards the end of the afternoon you're like hey you know what i do need to slow down i'm gonna go not my pjs but you know loungewear yeah. that's one of the new things oh my god i remember that early riser COVID. thing i remember Lounge. we had this event you were the moderator we were uh, which was it in clark uh yeah yeah you were so cheerful in the morning and i woke up like 30 minutes ago i'm like what the hell bea like, go away <laughs> yeah, you're, you're too dude. high energy today <laughs> Like, I think Jason had to drink two cups yeah, of coffee that morning. I could not keep morning. up with you. Right? All, well, also because we were drinking the night before. That's true also, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, it's, uh, these events, might as well. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Well, it's going to happen soon when COVID is done. Yeah, there's going to be a ton of parties. Actually, like, our reception is canceled. Sure. So we promised our friends next year we're going to have, like, this big ass party. Um, I totally got bleeped by your audio guys, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to have this big party because we're not having a reception. It's the biggest day of our lives, right? So, you know what? On the, on the outfit thing, um, I noticed also that my, my, my shopping behavior kind of changed. I, I started getting more athleisure wear. You know, the, I, I, used to hate, there, yes! I used to hate the word athleisure. Yes! <laughs> I thought it was such an unnecessary, pretentious word. And here I am. I am a, I am gladly a, a prophet of the athleisure church. My God, the transition from my my office attire, quote unquote office attire, to like my workout attire is this you know it's the same thing. Also, it saves me on laundry, which is a great thing. Yeah. No, seriously, and and I would like to add something to your um, vocabulary, glambahay. Oh, that's Why new, glambahay. I love it. Glamorous, Glamorous Why not? It, it's technically athleisure. Yeah, I right? saw some. Um, I saw some stuff. Some stores on Instagram, right? They have PJs, but the, the upper part looks like office wear, <laughs> but it's still like loose <laughs> silk or ray uh, rayon uh, trousers. That was cool. I thought that was really cool. 
Well, I'm going to be seeing more of you in that one for sure. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm okay with my like athleisure shirt. So I'm, I'm yeah, it's very lucky to be in the creative industry, right? So you don't have to wear a collared yeah. shirt all the time. But once in a while, exactly. if meeting a major client, I, I I like to dress up. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, so so see, there are so many ways, guys, that we can operationalize work in a work from home setup. But don't forget that you also need to operationalize your home space, right? To make work from home work yeah jason we are like winding down i know that we had so many things to talk about but i do have my one last question and i think that i really really want folks to also hear it from you because you've been through it right how do we deal with burnout in this new workspace wow uh how to deal with burnout uh great question uh if you guys are listening i have three videos on burnout on my youtube channel better today with jason cruz shameless plug Please do visit it. Um, I'm trying to get a thousand. Please do. I'm trying to get a thousand subs before the year ends, and it's a slow slog because how many people are actually after work-life inspiration, right? So anyway, yeah, I have, I have a couple of videos on burnout. Uh, how to deal with burnout? Um, I think you you've got to set I, my, the one thing that that worked for me, and I gave this advice in my video. You've got to schedule on your calendar a date with yourself. That's uh, because, especially if you're in a, in a, in a white collar and job environment, which a lot of you listeners are, your calendar is pretty much di- you know, it dictates your life. And if it's, you know, I don't, I think some of you also feel this. If it's not on your calendar, it doesn't exist. So, yeah. So you've got to set your, you, you've got to set a date with yourself. I think it 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 helps because you anticipate it. You know how we anticipate having a Friday night. We don't we don't necessarily have that nowadays. So what I do is. Um, I, I block off occasional Friday nights, like from 8 p.m. up until 11 p.m. It's just so nice to see it in the calendar. And, you know, you can name it anything you want, like self-care Fridays. I just call it, like, drinks with my boys. And uh, my, my guy friends are also in uh, the same industry. And so mm-hmm. we, we use that time to, like, we don't even talk much. It's just our cameras are on. We're drinking beverages in the comfort of our homes. We, sometimes there's like periods of minutes where we don't talk, but we're just together. And man, that, that's yeah. so good, you know. And when someone has something to say, then someone says something. I think you gotta do it. You, you, right now, yeah. you know, right now, go open a new tab in your computer, look at your calendar, find a day in the next couple of weeks, block off two to three hours. That's your day with yourself. It's, uh, it just allows you to, to, to literally commit to yourself some time uh, with yourself. Yep. The second one, I think, is why I also started my, my YouTube channel. I, I started creating content way back. I, was, I, was, uh, I had a blog, so I was writing. Writing was my content. My LinkedIn articles as well, that's my content. But I think I wanted to do something new. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to pick up a new hobby. So if you want to stop burnout, you've got to stop doing the same things. Burnout happens yeah. because you're constantly doing the same things over and over again, and it just gets mentally exhausting. So if you can like pick up something new, it doesn't have to be something complicated. I mean, I did not set out with this goal of having a work-life inspiration YouTube channel. I wanted to learn how to edit videos. That was it. But I wanted to apply it as well because it's, you know when you have a hobby, you want to try and apply it, right? So I think yeah. pick up something. You know, it doesn't have to be something complicated. I, uh, I unboxed my old skateboard that I haven't used for like three years and I checked if the bearings were still okay. Yeah, and I started skating again. So once a week, uh, say if I'm not overtime, I, twice a week, I would go to the second level parking lot in my condo and I would just skate around. And I discovered that the second level parking lot in my condo, I could actually go end to end between two gates without like, breaking because it was yeah you, know, you discover like fun weird things like that in your own yeah you know, in, in your own life so yeah just just go pick up something again pick up something new that would be mm-hmm. uh yeah that's 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 massive help so yeah i fell in love again with skating because that's that was something that i, I really loved doing when i was a young younger kid i trivia for the listeners i don't know how to ride a bicycle because me too but I have a story, Bea. So you Jason. better have a story why you don't know how to ride a bicycle. Okay. I was nine years old and my mom was like initiating me into the world of wheels. You know, I'm an only child, single parent home at the time. So uh, my mom was like, okay, you get to pick your wheels. You can get a bike. Mm-hmm. And then she didn't give me any other choice, right? So you could get a bike. But I was like, hey, I'm going to get a pair of wheels, you know, to you know, feel like a man. 
And uh, so I, 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 I saw this skateboard at a sports store. We were in the mall and I said, can I get the skateboard? And my mom was like, no, you cannot. And <laughs> she said, but I said, hey, you told me I could get wheels. So yeah, so I, she, I, I whined a bit, you know, a nine-year-old whining is annoying. So I whined a little bit. Uh, she gave in, but she got me like pads. She got me helmets, but, which by the way, I never use because it's uncool. But if you're at home, you want to learn how to skate, Please wear a helmet. I still wear a helmet. I'm 32 years old. It does not make you look uncool. It is it is practical because if you fall, you do not want to die. So yeah, I learned how to skate and uh, at nine and, and until now, I'm, I'm, I still skate quite a quite a bit because of the pandemic. And that's why I don't know how to ride a bike. Bea, you better have a really cool reason why you don't okay, know how to ride so- a bike. Yeah, so I really don't know how to ride a bike, people, because so I was also introduced to the world of biking. So you know, like all parents probably just buy you a bike, and then you 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 have training wheels, and then you're like, fantastic, I can do it. But then really, when the wheels are off, you can't. And I was just like, I'm a big girl now, I can handle mountain bikes. Well, guess what? I fell, and I was just too scared oh, to do it. Like you know those really big mountain bikes with thin um with thin yeah. wheels so it was like i got off the training wheels and then i decided that big girl status i needed to to get on the big girl bike and guess what it just didn't happen i scraped myself up good so i think i was just really traumatized i tried to do it again and again but on the same bike so hello insanity you know what they say about yeah the you're expecting insanity. different results huh <laughs> so yeah so yeah, I don't, I don't know how. You know, one of these days, uh, I have my skateboard in the trunk of the car. I'm gonna pass by your place when I visit. Uh, yeah, let's do ba- it. Yeah, and, and then like, you can teach babe, me. For the next hour, you're gonna learn how to skate. And then I'll just wear a helmet because it's it's cool. Yeah, the tennis court Helmets across you, right? Cool. That's like a, the perfect. That, yeah, we can yeah, do that. It's the perfect place to learn, and no one's around, so Absolutely. no one will see you. <laughs> Yeah, so see guys, Jason Cruz here having a lot of different ideas on how we can deal with burnout in this now normal setup. Jason, I know that you've already shared this with folks, but I do really believe that they should hear more about what you can say about this whole new setup and like what you said, work-life inspiration. Uh, One of my favorite terms that you've coined together. Can you please tell them where they can find you, where they can follow you so that you can continue this conversation with them through your own content. Go ahead. All right, so I guess this is the, the one minute to like shamelessly plug where I can be found. Uh, I'm pretty easy to find on social media. My handle is the same everywhere. It's J-S-N-C-R-U-Z, so J-S-N Cruz. Um, on LinkedIn, if you're interested in marketing and leadership content, that's where I have the bulk of my leadership and marketing content at. So my LinkedIn is J-S-N Cruz. I pretty much live on LinkedIn, so look me up there. If you like mountains and outdoorsy stuff, my Instagram, which is currently hugely inactive because there has not been any recent trip, uh, my same handle on Instagram, JSN Cruz. I'd love to connect with you there if you're a, an outdoorsy person. Maybe we can all like go for a hike next year. And uh, my current uh, passion project, which is my YouTube channel, uh, Better Today with Jason Cruz. Pretty easy to find. Uh, surprisingly, uh, yeah, if you type my name on YouTube, I'm probably one of the first few results, which for me is a massive achievement because I could never do that with my website. So my website, I'm like number eight or nine in the results because there's this rock star named Jason Cruz. It's kind of hard to beat a rock star. But on YouTube, he doesn't have a channel. (laughs) So I'm so lucky. If you're after work-life inspiration and you just want to see random videos on how to, you know, maybe leadership or presentation skills, I also have that on my YouTube channel. Uh, Check it out. I will see you guys everywhere on the internet. There you have it, because Jason Cruz is um, not only creating content for marketing leadership, but he's also creating content for work-life inspiration. And guys, really, at this point, you've heard it through our conversation. We all need that, right? Because like what Jason said, it's here. It's not going anywhere for some time, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to have to just do that um, uh, decision, like make that decision to say, hey, you know what? The now normal is the now normal 
it is something that we're going to have to work with um but it's not that we do it alone um you know just with this conversation with jason he did say that there are so many different ways that we can make work from home setup blended ops and the evolution of the workplace work for Absolutely. us number one guys don't be afraid to operationalize from a business standpoint we can make it happen so to all of our business owner friends out there guys we can operationalize our businesses by providing tools, um, different setups, and um, even different benefits to make sure that we are all equipped to have this work from home setup in the longer term. But don't forget, guys, also is that we can operationalize our personal spaces so that we can make work from home work for us. So for today's Reality Bite, guys, where we want you to be in the know and in the now, we had our discussion on the evolution of the workplace with Mr. Jason Cruz here. Um, what we really want to leave you with is this, right? The now normal is defined by you. Yes, we may have been placed in this ever repeating roller coaster and that like Jason, I think you 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 gave everybody a great visual earlier. We are muddied and bloodied and all of that jazz in this experiment <laughs> that nobody really, yeah, nobody really thought that, you know, it would happen. But the thing is how you're going to get up from it and how you're actually going to swim, rock and roll, ride the tide and just do it is up to you. And, and you're stronger than you think, ladies and gentlemen. So in the evolution of the workplace, remember that we also have to evolve as individuals and as um, creatives and productive workforce. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, with Mr. Jason Cruz on the evolution of the workplace. Don't forget to check out his own channels, especially Better Today with Jason Cruz on YouTube. Let's help him get his 1,000 followers. Jason, thank you so much for being here today. And we are cheering you on with your upcoming big life-changing moment of being married very soon. And we're sending you happy sparkles from the B2B family. Thanks, Bea. Thanks for having me today. It was, it's, uh, it's always a good time whenever we get to catch up in a, like a non-conference setting because that seems to be like where we meet all the time. <laughs> yes. So thank you so much, Jason. And don't worry, we're going to have either coffee, skateboarding, or e Newman soon so there you have it ladies and gentlemen b2b breakfast to business and the evolution of the workplace please don't forget to follow our social media as well and engage with us tell us what you think tell us what are the things that you want to hear and if you have your own tips and tricks please do share them as well we're on facebook instagram and linkedin don't forget to tag us and of course don't forget to visit our amazing website www.teamasia.com once again, this is Bailim, your morning girl, signing off together with Mr. Jason Cruz. Um, and here we are saying ta-ta for now. Thanks, guys. Bye.